Hi, my name is Dave Wilkin. I'm the coordinator of jazz studies at the University of North Carolina at Asheville, and one of my research interests is studying brass embouchures. In this short video, I will discuss a single tubist's embouchure. The increased size of a tuba mouthpiece makes it easier to see the lip position inside the mouthpiece on video, and this particular tubist has some interesting features of note. Before I focus on my case study, however, I need to define some of the terms I will be using in this video, as they have different associations to different people. When I refer to a downstream or upstream embouchure, I am not talking about the player's horn angle, but rather the predominance of one lip or another inside the mouthpiece cup. Generally speaking, when a player places the mouthpiece higher on the lips, the upper lip will predominate and the airstream is blown downward. This is what I mean by a downstream embouchure. The reverse situation, where the mouthpiece is placed lower on the lips and the lower lip predominates, causes the airstream to be blown upwards as it passes the lips. This is what I will be referring to as an upstream embouchure. While some players believe they blow the air straight into the shank of the mouthpiece, it's unlikely that any player who is successful for a long term is actually consistently doing so, as this situation is rare and usually accompanied by embouchure problems. Successful players who place close to half and half, such as this trumpet player, will have one lip that ends up predominating and the embouchure will still function as either upstream or downstream, which can sometimes only be observed by watching where the condensation or spit is disturbed on a transparent mouthpiece. The embouchure type is solely dependent on the individual player's unique anatomy, and mouthpiece placement should be based on what works well, not what looks centered. To learn a little more about this phenomenon and see some other examples, you can watch an earlier video I posted called The Brass Embouchure and Airstream Direction. While mouthpiece placement is usually a good indicator of the airstream direction, Players who place their mouthpiece closer to half and half can sometimes flip the direction of the airstream through changing their lip position. This tubist places the mouthpiece on his lips with more upper lip inside the cup, and plays this high C with a downstream embouchure. When he gets to around his middle C, his lips start fighting for predominance, and it's difficult to tell whether he's playing upstream or downstream. As he plays lower, however, his lower lip predominates, and he switches to an upstream embouchure. As you watch these two octave slurs, you might also notice that the intonation on the middle C is inconsistent. Now watch this tubist perform an etude, and see how he slips from an upstream embouchure to a downstream embouchure at about the same point every time. You will also notice that when this embouchure type switching happens, there's a change in timbre and almost always a slight split attack as the lips fight for predominance for a brief moment. <laughs> Thank you. 
While this player has unconsciously become fairly adept at disguising his airstream direction switch, he struggles with his upper range. His range caps around a D above middle C. Rest for a second. Take the mouthpiece off the lips and rest for a second. Okay, now try it again, please. He discovered on his own, however, that if he placed the mouthpiece lower on the lips, he could play higher. A teacher of his advised against this embouchure, but he is able to play his entire range with this upstream setting, although he hasn't developed the ability to play as accurately with the lower mouthpiece placement. Keep going down. asked him to try some octave slurs with the lower mouthpiece placement, resulting in an embouchure that is upstream for the entire range. You can notice here that rather than missing the high C beneath the pitch, as he did while playing the same slurs downstream, he usually overshoots the high C. He even does this once on purpose, which he admitted off camera to doing because it felt easy to play like that. In spite of his embouchure idiosyncrasies, this talented student tubist uses his air well and possesses excellent musical instincts. When considering an embouchure correction, many factors should be considered, including the performance goals and playing demands of the individual. If practical, I feel that long-term progress will best be served by consciously adapting a single embouchure type and practicing to make it work over the entire range, rather than switching between types. As always, any corrective work should be done only in the practice room. When practicing expressive playing and performing, one should concentrate merely on sounding good, not embouchure mechanics.